How's it going, Giants fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. And today we want to discuss some injuries and one significant one to the cornerback group, probably the only place we cannot sustain any more injuries or at least, you know, any more issues because of the depth uh, or lack thereof uh, that we currently have at the position. So, you know, there's some stuff going on there. Uh, well, up to you guys on Kayvon Thibodeau, up to you guys on Aziz Ojolari, you know, definitely making some progress there, participating in individual stuff. I know Kayvon Thibodeau was kind of running on the side for the first time in about three weeks now, so he's getting closer. I still don't think he's ready yet. I, honestly, I think probably we're looking at a week three or week four return uh, for Kayvon Thibodeau, which is unfortunate, but if he's not even running yet, how on earth is he going to play a full football game and us feel confident he's going to make an impact? So. Uh, definitely not ideal there. Kadarius Tony did look like he was practicing in full today, which is a great sign for his chances at uh, making an appearance in week two, or at least, you know, more of an appearance. He only had seven snaps in week one against the Titans. And we know he's the energizer bunny on the field, man. He can do a lot of stuff. He is a uh, human joystick. And, you know, getting the ball in his hands, good things happen. I think that Brian Dable honestly just wasn't ready to install him just yet because he missed so much time this summer dealing with that leg issue. Um, and he just wasn't ready. He didn't really know the, the game plan. He didn't practice a lot last week. And, um, or rather the week before that. And, and now, you know, the Giants are kind of ramping him up, getting him ready, installing him into the strategy so he can make an impact. Richie James looked really good in his stead. So um, they maybe they'll kind of split reps there and just find different ways to get them involved. But I'm definitely curious to see how the Giants manage the cornerback spot now that Aaron Robinson had his appendix taken out today. That's a injury, or I guess not really an injury. I guess you could label it as an injury, but you know, he's out for a couple of weeks, most likely, probably two to three weeks if we have to be honest with ourselves right now. Appendix, you know, he has to recover from that. It's a surgery. It's a legit surgery. And then he's going to be taken out of the entire game plan. He's going to lose that progress that he made. Really crappy time for that to happen, which is unfortunate. So we'll discuss the options for the Giants that they can replace him with or really not really replace but supplement as best as they can. Uh, but Anthony, before we dive into this interesting topic, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm a little nervous with Kadarius Tony, his inability to get ramped up and ready for the games. I know that it's become very readily apparent now that the issue is practice and a lack of effort within practice and a lack of practice time spent on the field from Kadarius Tony that's keeping him out of the uh, rotation in the lineup on the regular season game days. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's ready to ramp all the way up in this next matchup against Carolina. In my opinion, whenever Kadarius Tony was out there, it seemed like he didn't need to know the playbook. He was balling every time the ball touched his hands. He must have broken like five tackles in two plays. I mean, the guy is so talented. I just wish he would get his head straight, you know, get out there, practice, prove to the coaching staff that he wants it so that they can utilize him on the field to the to his fullest capabilities. But talking about Aaron Robinson and some of these other injuries, Kayvon Thibodeau, I think that he does have a chance to play in week two against Carolina. Personally, I don't think he plays the full game. I don't think he starts, but I, I think that the Giants might go with the approach that you put him in as a rotational pass rusher, you get his feet wet and start to ramp him up towards full-time regular season action. And then with Aaron Robinson, huge loss to the Giants secondary, not because Aaron Robinson is just such a good and great player, but because they just have such a little amount of depth at the cornerback position. I remember when we took a look at the initial 53-man roster, we looked at the cornerback position, some of the waiver wire moves that they made, and we said, wow, they are extremely thin at cornerback. And if one injury happens, they're kind of screwed at that spot. And here we go. Aaron Robinson has appendicitis. So now it's kind of a shuffle to see who starts in place of Aaron Robinson at CB2 and how that performance might really affect the Giants' defense. Well, we know it's going to because the Tennessee Titans didn't have altogether a great receiving group. You know, you know, they had Robert Woods, who's coming off the ACL tear, and they have, um, you know, Traylon Burks, who's a rookie. He didn't really make much of an impact. The Carolina Panthers have a pretty decent wide receiver group. They have DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, LaVishka Chenault Jr., Terrace Marshall, um, some really good players that are going to give the Giants a fit um, in, in coverage. And, you know, replacing Aaron Robinson is no easy feat because of the lack of depth. Now, the waiver wire, we did get Nick McLeod, who's dealing with an injury right now um, after the win on Sunday. And then, of course, we also had uh, Justin Lane out of Pittsburgh, uh, who just came from Pittsburgh, who is not very good. But we did sign one guy, and that's Fabian Moreau, and, and, or Fabian, Fabian, uh, either or. He's actually probably the guy that gets start uh, reps here, in my opinion. I think that if you're going to look for a guy right now to supplement the loss of Aaron Robinson, it's Fabian Moreau. Why? Because he's the most experienced of the bunch. He started 16 games last year for the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he gave up uh, 523 yards and seven touchdowns. Is he good? No, he's not good. Of course he's not good. That's why he was picked up off free agency for next to nothing. But the reality is the Giants don't have a choice but to start a guy with uh, experience. 
um, and at least knows what he's doing on the football field instead of kind of running running around aimlessly. He gave up a lot of touchdowns early in the year, but he only gave up one touchdown in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games that he played. So at least he kind of he got better as the season went on, and he was decent in the middle of the year. Um, he went a couple of games with giving up minimal uh, production against the Jets in Week Five. Only gave up 11 yards, 36 yards against New Orleans, 28 yards against New England, 16 yards against Tampa Bay, and, and uh, 15 against uh, the San Francisco 49ers, and 16 against uh, Carolina. So he went a couple. There were a couple of games there where he actually played pretty well. Uh, so you know, th- there maybe he comes out and actually has a decent performance. The problem is the Giants play a very man coverage heavy scheme. So you're really asking a lot of your cornerbacks on an island, and then. Think about this, right? You're looking at a Dory Jackson and Fabian Moreau as your primary cornerbacks when Carolina probably is going to use more than two receivers, right? You're talking about, like I said before, your DJ Moore and, and Robbie Anderson are on the field all the time. How about Terrace Marshall? You know what I mean? How about LaVisca Chanel? You know, these guys are going to get reps too. Who the hell is covering them? I don't know. I mean, you have Darnay Holmes as well, who really, really underwhelmed in week one. Um, you know, so he'll have to come up big against guys like Chenault, who really will, will feature in the slots. Um, and DJ Moore as well. He's going to have a fit with DJ Moore. We're talking about a lot of man coverage. Um, I think they blit, the Giants blitzed at almost 50% rate this past week. So we're going to have to put push, pressure on Baker Mayfield. We're going to have to force him to throw off his back foot, hopefully uh, sail a couple of balls into Xavier McKinney's hands. We're going to have to expect that pass rush to really step up. And the problem is, I don't think Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be ready, and I don't think Aziz Ojolari is going to be ready either. So, you know, who's who's stepping up here? Jaheed Ward had a really good game as a run defender, right? He's not really a great pass rusher, but he's a really he can set a mean edge. He's a good run defender. Derrick Henry stopping him definitely. He he fits the mold there. Christian McCaffrey's a different beast, right? He's going to attack our linebackers. Uh, God forbid, Tay Crowder's in coverage on him or Austin Calitro. You know, Christian McCaffrey is going to eat those guys alive, and they're going to use him a lot as a receiver. So uh, this strategy for the Giants to beat Carolina, our, our weaknesses do not match up with their strengths. You know, it's it's not a good situation. Uh, but can we win? Of course we can. You know, we've seen what the Giants can do. We've seen what blitzing a lot can do to a quarterback. Um, the question is, can they stop Christian McCaffrey in the receiving game? Can they stop him in the in the running game? Um, and, and you know, can our cornerbacks hold up? That's a big one. So, Anthony, when you're looking at this cornerback group, who do you think steps up? Who do you think gets the start here? To, to supplement the loss of Aaron Robinson. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with you here with Fabian Moreau. You just need some veteran, experienced starting talent, right? And that, not that Fabian Moreau is such a great player, and it's you know so exciting to see him take the field for the Giants. We don't want him to take the field, but he has to take the field because I don't really think I'm comfortable seeing Cordell Flat line up there on the outside opposite of Dory Jackson and go for you know the full game because he didn't look ready in the preseason. I doubt that he's ready for full time regular season action, right? Uh, we didn't see much of him, if any of him at all, in the last week's game. Uh, uh, against the Tennessee Titans, but Cordell Fly again, a player that we like, a player that we think has great potential, something to build off of there. But right now, I just don't think he's ready to go out there and start a full game for the Giants defense. Fabian Moreau, however, has done that before. He's been a full-time starter over the course of a full regular season. So you know that he can go out there and at least just line up with the other team and do something, right? You know he's not just a complete total liability. So I think that's probably the best option. But I've actually come up with an alternative solution for you, Alex. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts and opinions on it, right? So Bear with me for this one, but Dane Belton is coming back from injury and he's a full participant in practice and there's a chance that he plays on Sunday and he's healthy. Now, Dane Belton's not an outside cornerback. He is more of a slot corner safety hybrid, plays that cash defender role that we love to talk about. However, let's imagine he enters a lineup, plays as the starting nickel corner for the Giants, and maybe you move Darnay Holmes to the outside. Now, Darnay Holmes had a major struggle game in week one. He was not, he didn't play his best football against the Tennessee Titans, so that might kind of kill this idea on arrival, you know, but when you're taking a look at Darnay Holmes, maybe you can argue he didn't play too well because he was playing in the slot. Maybe they should go ahead and try him on the outside, see if that can jumpstart his season, see if that can yield a better performance out of him. So there's my alternative solution to the cornerback problem for the Giants. Maybe Dane Belton enters the lineup now that he's healthy. He's not wearing the red jersey at practice anymore. He is fully ready to go, ready for contact. Maybe he enters the lineup, plays as a slot cornerback, and you kick Darnay Holmes to the outside. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that. Starting Dane Belton as the slot corner, is it, that's what you're suggesting? Um, uh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, no. <laughs> He's not a good man coverage corner, Dane Belton, or rather good man coverage safety. Um, he he thrives in zone. You know, he thrives in zone. That's what he thrived at at Iowa. 
Um, he's he had five interceptions last year, I believe. And all of them were reading the quarterback's eyes, traveling in between the, 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 the passing lanes. He got destroyed by Wayne by actually by Wandale Robinson against Kentucky destroyed by him playing man coverage. So do I trust him in the slot? Absolutely not. I don't trace. I don't trust, especially in this first game after coming back from a clavicle, a broken clavicle, not a chance. Um, I trust Julian love there a lot more. And I trust Dane Belton to play the opposite role. Uh, you think do you you think Julian Love should kick out to that to the outside? Is that is that what the suggestion? I is? could see that working. I could potentially see that. You could see Julian. Well, that's the the beauty of Julian Love, right? Julian Love played a great game at safety, but you can move him into the slot there and then move Darnay Holmes outside, or you can move Julian Love outside and keep most of the things intact and have Tony Jefferson step in and play that safety role. So the Giants don't have a lot of cornerback depth, but they do have depth in the secondary, and a lot of it is versatile depth that they can move around. Again, Dane Belton probably don't trust him on the outside at all, but you could maybe try him at slot you could maybe try him at you know free safety there are some options there and again tony jefferson was elevated from the practice squad ahead of the week one matchup so you could potentially see tony jefferson enter the starting lineup and move julian love basically wherever you want him to because he can play any position which is again the beauty of julian love so they do have a few options there and i'm curious to see though with dane belton how much playing time he does get because of course aaron robinson exiting the lineup at the same time as dane belton entering the lineup I am curious to see how much playing time he gets, what position they play him at primarily, and how he's able to perform in, in against NFL competition. Yeah, and you guys, if you're listening right now, give me your perspective and your opinion here. Would you rather uh, Fabian Moreau, Fabian Moreau, start at cornerback opposite of Dory Jackson, or would you rather move Julian Love from strong safety over to that outside corner spot for now and just let Dane Belton play strong safety? You know, like that would be the – that's the alternative move, right? Um I'm not so sure. You know, like you said, Julian Love does have the capabilities to play a multitude of different positions. We've seen him do it in the past, but he hasn't played cornerback on the outside very much at the NFL level. He had a couple of reps last season, but do I trust him there? Not necessarily. I don't trust Moreau. Honestly, I don't trust anyone there aside, let alone Aaron Robinson. I barely trust him. He had a good game in week one, but I still need to see a lot more before I actually trust him. Um, you know, right now, I guess you're kind of picking your poison. Do you go with a guy you're familiar with or do you go with a guy – uh, you know, that you just got off of waiver or signed off a of free agency like a couple of like two weeks ago, I guess. So it's a tough decision. I think that just based on the way the Giants are constructing their defense, I think Moreau gets the nod because I think that they want to utilize three safeties a little bit more uh, in this game because having Dane Belton, Julian Love, and Xavier McKinney on the field may help mask some of the coverage deficiencies that the linebacker position poses um, because I think you're going to need to ask Julian Love, hey, I, we need you to be. We need you to man up on Christian McCaffrey um, because I know he has that cornerback's capability. So you know, if I'm looking at the matchup specifically, I think you're like, love. You stay a strong safety. You spy on Christian McCaffrey. You follow him wherever he goes. And Fabian Moreau, good luck out there. We'll see what you can do in man coverage, and hopefully you survive on the island. But that's kind of what I would go with. I think that would be my preference because I don't necessarily trust anybody else um, playing safety to cover Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, and, and I'll say I think that you're going to see a lot of dime packages from the Giants this week. You know, even though they're thin in the secondary, I think the reason for that is because the linebackers not playing well is going to force some of these safeties to play linebackers. So you're going to see six defensive backs on the field. Even though the Giants are thin in the defensive backfield, I think you're going to see Xavier McKinney play quite a bit in the box. You're going to see Julian Love move his way into the box. Tony Jefferson, basically at this age, you know, with his speed is a linebacker. So you're going to see him play in the box. So I think that's something that you're going to see. And it's just going to give more opportunities for these young guys as well. Like a Dane Belton making his first career appearance in the NFL, you're going to see him on the field just because I think that's how the Giants are going to go ahead here and really construct their defense. Just try and get some of these, you know, safeties to play linebacker because Christian McCaffrey is the focus of the Carolina Panthers offense. He's going to get a ton, a ton of targets in the receiving game. And the Giants need to have a defensive back in the box to match up with that. Because, again, Tay Crowder, Austin Calitro, those guys aren't going to get the job done against Christian McCaffrey. He's far too good. He's far too elite of a route runner. He's far too great of a pass catcher. You don't want a linebacker matched up on him all game long. So you're going to see some of these safeties play in the box. But I also have another interesting stat to throw at you, Alex, just kind of speaking to the man versus zone splits. And I will argue you could see – Dane Belton potentially play half of the game because looking at the splits um, for the New York Giants in week one, 16 man coverage snaps uh, from Adore Jackson and 16 zone coverage snaps from Adore Jackson. Now they played man coverage on 
41 percent and yeah and zone on 41 percent as well so it was an even split right there the other snaps were rushing attempts but it was an even split which is high usually in the nfl if it's an even split that's high for man coverage so the giants did play a lot of man coverage by playing half of their snaps in man but just interestingly interestingly enough to take a look at that you can maybe see dane belton play half of the snaps for the giants defense in the slot while you have someone else play the rest of the man coverage snaps though it could be a tell for the offense yeah, it's interesting. Well, we're going to see what happens here. This is going to be a tough uh, situation to kind of work around for the Giants, but I'd love to hear perspectives and opinions below in the YouTube comments. As always, my friends, thoughts on the cornerback spot, thoughts on the pass rush. How do we stop this Carolina team? A lot better receiver core. Christian McCaffrey, of course, tough to stop. But their offensive line did rank 28th in pass blocking, so there is that. There is some hope that our pass rush can hit home. Um, you know, that's an underwhelming number and hopefully the Giants can expose that once again after they got kind of beat up by the Browns, uh, this past week, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, my friends, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Make sure to like, and subscribe as always, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants episode. Mm -hmm.